to today's video. In today's video, we are going to be discussing something that's kind of been on my mind lately because I've had some of these situations come up recently. So it's just something I've been thinking about. And I feel like a lot of us can learn from this because sometimes we do things with our reptiles that we don't realize are actually stressing them out. And I just find that it can be disrespectful. Some of them are more obvious than others, but I just wanted to make a video and just talk about this topic and some of the things that I find to be disrespectful with your reptiles. Um, so yeah, hopefully I won't make too many people mad, but it's just some changes that I'd like to see and just some things to be aware of with your own behavior with your own animals just to make sure that you're giving them the best life that you possibly can be. So yeah, we're going to jump right into it. If you guys have any others that you would like to add to my list, please go ahead and leave it in the comment section because I would love to read about it. So the first thing is beyond obvious. I've said this a million times, but I do feel the need to add it because it's sometimes what people just don't do and it's like the worst thing ever. So the first one is to always research the animal before you get it. So I don't like people that spontaneously buy animals that they know absolutely nothing about because they're not going to end up providing good care to that animal. They may realize in the long run that they can't afford to actually give it the proper care that they need to or they don't have the time or they don't have the space. There's so many different things that go into caring for these exotic animals. So it's very important to make sure that you know everything that you possibly can before you make the commitment of getting one of them. And then it's also important to make sure that while you already have the animal that you're continuing to research because things change and we're always learning new things when it comes to reptile keeping. So it's important to just keep yourself up to date and possibly make changes to your care if need be just to make sure that it is appropriate for your animal. You know, you guys have heard me say this so many times, so I'm sorry if it sounds redundant, but it is so important, especially for new keepers, because people are going to be doing this forever. And it's just something that I want to bring awareness to so badly. Number two is a situation that I have dealt with so much recently, basically because I work in customer service um, for Zen Habitats, which is an enclosure company. So this one is to have your enclosure completely ready before you get or bring your new animal home. So the thing that I've been dealing with is um, customers that like buy an enclosure and there's been so many like shipping delays with COVID or the weather. There's different things that happen. And so like your estimated delivery date is an estimation. It's never a guarantee, but I feel like people put their faith way too much in that. And then they end up with like a delay of some sort, something happens, life happens, and they don't get the enclosure on the exact day that they were expecting. And then they planned to get the animal that same day as well. There's a couple of problems with this because um, one, if that enclosure doesn't deliver on that exact day when you get the animal, your animal will not have an enclosure. And that's why people like yelling at me with customer service. They're like, oh, I have this bearded dragon and I don't have an enclosure. And I'm like, why did you do that? You should make sure that you have the enclosure completely set up and ready before you bring that animal home. Like, it's just very frustrating. It's one of my new pet peeves. Um, and the other thing is like also doing things so last minute like that is just so dangerous. And I find that it is just disrespectful towards the animal. So it's just our responsibility to make sure that we have all of those affairs taken care of. You have the enclosure completely ready, decked out so that way your animal can just go into it and adjust. That is the most respectful thing that you can do. It's the least that we can do after bringing an animal into our homes like that. So yeah, that is just like one of my new pet peeves. So please make sure you have that full enclosure, everything decked out and ready to go by the time that you are bringing that animal home. Number three is to let that animal adjust for at least a week before handling. So it does depend on the animal. I feel like that's a good guideline to go off of, um, but there are some instances where it's still not okay. And that is if your animal, if you've had it for a week, you've let it adjust and your animal has not eaten and is refusing to eat, then absolutely still do not handle it. Because if you handle it while it's already stressed out, that's why it's not eating in the first place. It has to be due to stress. And then you're going to handle it on top of that stress and add even more stress. It is so bad for your animal to stress them out like that. 
so bad for their health. It's going to make them not eat even more. So please do not handle until your animal has been adjusted for a week in its new environment and it's already eating because that is a perfect sign that your animal is adjusting to the transition of the new enclosure and that would be a good time to be able to start handling. So you just have to respect the animal and give it its time and let it adjust and let it be feel safe in its new environment before you can start working on your relationship with the animal. I know some people are just impatient. They just want to start working with the animal right away, handling it, taking photos, all that fun stuff. You have to hold off for the respect of the animal just to make sure that you are not overdoing it and stressing it out because it's already a stressful situation. Number four is short handling sessions, especially with new or just highly stressed out animals. So if you are trying to work with an animal to build a relationship, a bond and trust with it, it doesn't like handling and you just want it to get used to handling, the best thing to do is to do short handling sessions. You don't want to overdo it. I see that some people like to overdo it because they think that it's helpful and it will speed the process up but I think that that is just not beneficial to the animal's well-being at all. So please don't do that. Please stick with short handling sessions out of respect for your animal because they will thank you in the end. Number five is one of my biggest pet peeves and I feel like it's common sense, but not everyone has common sense and not everyone does that. But some people, I mean, I think that people do a lot of things completely harmlessly and they just don't realize how bad that is for their animal, which is why I'm making this video. But the next one is scare tactics. So this is when people try to scare their friends with animals because they think it's funny. I do not like that sense of humor. Like that's not my thing. And I just always fear for the animals. Um, I've seen so many times like YouTube videos where people are afraid of snakes. So like people are like throwing snakes on them and they'll be like, oh, close your eyes. And then they open it and there's a snake. Like that is so dangerous because if someone is fearful of that animal, they're not going to handle it with respect and care. And I mean, you can't expect them to. Um, especially if you're trying to scare them, they're going to react in a fearful way, which can be dangerous for your animal. They may throw the animal, they may step on the animal. Like that is so beyond disrespectful to that animal. Just please don't do that. I really, really can't stand seeing when people do that. It's just, it makes me so mad. Like just don't do that to your animal, please. I do not like seeing it. Um, and your animal does not appreciate that either. So please be respectful of them and remember like you are responsible for them. You're like their mom and dad. You got to make sure you're putting them in safe situations out of respect. And that is just beyond disrespectful. Number six is for snakes specifically. And that is no handling for at least 24 hours after the snake has eaten. I feel like everyone basically knows this, but it's good to mention just to be safe. Um, some people just, I feel like impatience is something that happens a lot with reptile keepers and they may just want to handle the animal or take a picture, whatever the case is. If they have not had at least 24 hours to digest after a meal, do not do it out of respect for the animal. It's going to be very uncomfortable for the snake and it can also risk them regurgitating their meal, which is very hard on their bodies and it's just awful. Like, don't put your animal through that. It's not going to be worth it. Give them that time to adjust. Give them that respect because they deserve it. Number seven is patience in building trust. So this kind of relates back to the short handling session thing. Um, and that is like some people really think that they can build a good relationship with their reptile by scaring the living crap out of it, basically and handling it and stressing it out and putting it in these horrible situations because they think that the animal will realize, oh, I'm still alive, so maybe this is okay. I just, I don't think that's good enough. I don't think that's a healthy way to get an animal used to you with handling. I also fear that it doesn't help build trust. 
Um, it just gets them kind of used to stressful situations. And I don't think that that is like worthy of like a really good bond or trustful relationship. So when it comes to reptiles, it's very important if you're trying to build a relationship with them to have patience, start slow. It can take years to build trust with a reptile and you need to be prepared for that because reptiles are not like keeping other animals like mammals that trust you right away. Like it takes work and sometimes you can't, it's not always a guarantee either. So it's just something to be aware of hand feeding over time, different things like that, short handling sessions, all of those things can help build a relationship rather than just snatching your animal out, taking it outside and stressing it out and over handling it to make it realize, oh, I'm still alive, like this must be okay. And then the fight or flight just kind of dissipates. I don't think that's good enough. I find that very disrespectful. So I just don't like that tactic at all. So like, just had to mention it in today's video. It's just not something that I like to see. Number eight is accepting that not all reptiles are handleable. It does depend on the species. For instance, bearded dragons are generally very, very tolerant of handling. However, it's not always a guarantee that the bearded dragon that you get will tolerate handling like others do. You may have a very feisty one or a very fearful one and it may take some work. And with some species, it's just best to be hands off. Like chameleons are not typically a handleable animal. They can be, and I do handle mine from time to time to give them some natural sunlight and things like that for enrichment. But it's not an animal that I'm taking out every single day because it's not something that they enjoy and it does cause stress. There are so many reptile species that are like that, that just prefer to not be handled. And it is so important to respect that and be aware of that before you get the animal. My blue tongue skink I got, I thought that he was going to be handleable and similar to a bearded dragon. I wasn't aware that he was wild caught. And I'm able to still have a great relationship with him, even though I don't handle him because he absolutely hates it. He still trusts me and comes to me for food. And I still have a wonderful relationship with him and I respect it so much. And I don't pressure him or force handling on him because I know that it's just going to stress him out. And I just don't think it's worth it. I just don't want to put him in that situation. So yeah, we have a great relationship that is completely non-handleable. And like, sometimes you just have to accept that and realize that that may be the outcome of your relationship with your reptile and still commit to taking care of that animal. Number 10 is do not over socialize your reptiles. So reptiles are typically solitary animals. Socialization is not something that they need. Handling them can be wonderful. It can provide enrichment if they're tolerant of it. But some people seem to take it a little bit too far to the point where it does stress out their animals too much. Um, for instance, I just saw a TikTok where this guy was taking his chameleon out. He was literally going through a drive through and having people pet it and bringing it to like pet stores and just out in public around all these people. And he was saying that he thinks that it's good because he's making her realize that these situations are not stressful and socializing her. And he thinks that that benefits the chameleon at the end of the day. However, just because your chameleon is not hissing at you or trying to bite you and showing very obvious signs of stress does not mean that your animal is not stressed. Reptiles are very good at hiding their stress sometimes or illnesses. It's just how they're built in order to survive in the wild. So it's very important to just respect that these animals are not highly social animals. So we should not be socializing them as if they are. I think that that's just very important and it just comes down to respect for your animal. Like there's no reason why your animal needs to go through a drive through with you and get pet by strangers. That's so unnatural for them. So it's just not something that I like to see. And I think that, I don't think he was trying to cause any harm in that situation. However, I do fear that it is harmful and it is risky and it is slightly disrespectful of the animal. So I just feel the need to bring that up because people do these things all the time without realizing that it can be disrespectful. And there's just better ways that we can go about these situations and make sure that your animal has the happiest life possible. So if you guys have any others that you want to leave, please go ahead and leave it in my comment section. I would love to see it. I hope that today's video was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one.